Hey guys, I got a request to make a tutorial on how to make water, so I'm going to give that a try. And I'll start off with on my first layer, just the draw shape tool. I'm just going to draw a rectangle, and then I'm going to call that background layer. Or call it background. Then create another vector layer, and we'll call this wave, and this is going to be our animation for the water. So we'll do, uh, draw another shape. And I'm going to hit A and add a couple points up here. I'm going to hit T and then reshape this to look kind of like a uh, lightning bolt. Like that. And then I'll hit C and curve out these points so it looks more like a wave. And using T I'll just keep uh, moving these points till I think it looks right. Kind of like... That. There we go. That looks pretty good. Now, we need to animate this wave. So we'll go to frame one. I'm going to hit T and click on the uh, wave. And that just creates a keyframe for all of the points. And then we'll go to frame 30. And I'll just click on the canvas. Hit G, select these two points, move them up. Hit G, select these two points and move them down. Maybe move the end up a little bit like that. Let's, uh, let's make sure it looks like a wave still, just going up and down. Like that. And then... <clears throat> Let's select the first two key, uh, keyframes and hit Command C, copy, go to frame 60, Command V to paste, and we'll select these last keyframes, right click, select cycle, and then go to frame 2, and then we have an animation of the wave just kind of bending back and forth like that, which is exactly what we want, and then we're also going to go to frame one again, and using the transform layer tool, we'll go ahead and uh, click on the layer so it creates a keyframe. And then we'll go down to frame 32 or so, 34, and then just move this uh, to the right or the left, it doesn't matter. And I'm just offsetting a little bit so it gives it more variety. It doesn't matter where you put the center point but then we need to copy and paste the first keyframe again. So copy that first keyframe and paste it on 60. And then do the same thing you did with the first part of the animation. Right click, cycle to two. Now we have an animation that's looping that the waves moving up and down and moving left to right. And that's actually a little too fast. So, I'm gonna grab these endpoints and pull them out to 90, and then grab the center points and move those two. And just, let's not move it to the right so much. We'll just go right about there. So it's not, yeah, that looks pretty good. So now, let's go ahead and just shrink this down a little bit on frame zero. So it's about, about that big. Um, maybe stretch it out. A lot of this has to do with just getting the right look for it. Um, we need to do a couple of things to this to make this look like water. So we need to hit Q and select the shape. And we're going to go to the fill. And we're going to change the opacity um, to almost see through. So click about here on this column. And then hit OK. And then also double click on the wave and select um, under the uh, layer blending mode, select add and hit okay. And it won't look like much has happened, but if I move the wave over the water and render it, you'll see that it's actually lighter. And that's what the add uh, on the um, blending mode does. And so 
even though it's almost see-through, when we put it in particles, it's going to, anywhere it overlaps, it's going to become brighter. So there's our animation for the water up there. Um, and now we also need to click on the effect. With, with the layer selected, hit Q and select the shape. Go ahead and select soft edge also. And that's just going to blur the wave. And we're going to turn it down to about six. Okay. And now we need to add a particle layer. Uh, left click and drag on the wave and drag it into the particle layer. Click on the particle layer and then we need to uh, adjust the settings so it's not just flying in the air. You can go ahead and go on the timeline and hit the spacebar to play so you can see what's going on. Um, click the particle options. And we do want to add more particle count to the count. So we'll do 200. We'll preview all 200. Make the lifetime of the frame zero. And then we'll zero out velocity, spread, uh, direction, acceleration, rate, spread. So now the waves are all overlapping each other right here. And let's go ahead and spread them out by clicking on the source width and dragging. So they spread out like that. And then source height will do that also. So now we have a bunch of waves here. And then the last thing we need to do is hit randomize playback. So now they're all waving differently. So now we have our water. We'll click on the timeline, go back to zero, and let's transform layer, the particle layer, and drag it over the water. Now you won't be able to see anything because um, the blend mode is turned to screen. But if I render the, this frame, you'll see that it kind of looks like water already in the render screen. So we'll just go ahead and uh, leave it like that. And actually, let me move this, the waves up for a second. I'm going to click on the background and hit Q. And I'm going to go up here to the effects and select gradient. And I'm going to click the white square and then the white color. And I'll go ahead and choose um, a dark blue. Hit OK. Select the black square and then click on the black color and then do a light blue. Uh, about like that. And hit OK. And then it's going to show you the gradient tool. And we'll just drag the red circle to the bottom and then drag the white to the top of the water and click off of that. And then we have a little gradient going on, so that's going to look a little bit better. And we might be able to see our waves. So click on the particle layer again and then the transform layer tool and drag it on top of here. So now you can see the waves at least. Um, and if I hit play, they're playing on there. And that's, that's pretty much it for making water. If you, basically you have to adjust the gradient um, the fill of the wave color and also the edge, soft edge. That's what makes the water look real. So I am going to add a picture to this background and then I will render it out and show you the final result. Okay, I've put a picture in um, this animation, and I'm going to uh, actually click on the particle layer and, and um, move it up. And one of the Anime Studio users, uh, his name's DK, he actually showed me this trick. Um, I'm going to uh, rotate the particles by, and this is just going to make it look a little bit more realistic again. Um, hitting the uh, rotate layer XY, and then click on the X rotation. And if I click and drag on the um, particle layer, you can see that it's turning in 3D space. So I'm just tilting it back 
so it actually looks a little bit more realistic. It's actually um, going back in 3D space. So if I click on move, you can see that the uh, transform layer tool is now distorted because it's actually turned. So I'm going to pull this up about here, stretch out the layer. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. So let me spread the uh, particle out just a little bit more. Okay, I'll go ahead and render this out. So here's the final render. Uh, I think I'll probably end up making another one that's a little bit more detailed, but this will give you a basic idea of how it would look. And that's it. Uh, if you have any questions or uh, any thoughts, just leave a comment below. Thanks. So here's the final render. Uh, I think I'll probably end up making another one that's a little bit more detailed, but this will give you a basic idea of how it would look. And that's it. Uh, if you have any questions or uh, any thoughts, just leave a comment below. Thanks.